guys, welcome back to Irish Funny Vlogs. Welcome back to another Premier Division review show. We've three games on Friday night, two games on the Saturday. Um, I don't think there's a better place, lads, to start off than Finn Harps and Dundalk at um at Finn Park. I finished Harps two, Dundalk two, and their little rivalry, I suppose, continued on. And as such, it's it's almost like they've had three draws in the last few weeks because of, of course Dundalk won the cup game after extra time, but in the 90 minutes it was a draw. Oh Labby with two goals, Duffy and Hooven with the goals, another free kick from Duffy, although I thought Dotterty could have done better with that one, to be fair, in my opinion. Uh Keen, I'll start off with you. What did you think of this game? Um and how is who's happier with the points, do you think? Uh, that was game of the week, uh, no question about it. Uh, what a match, and it's it's a shame that you know this game was not televised. Not because it turned out to be a great game, but it was the most important game of the weekend, really. Like they showed Pats and Drotter, which probably meant nothing to both sides, really. And it, like I don't know, they were talking about a title race after the game and. Uh, on the on RTE and it was just I just thought it was a little bit a uh, little bit of a waste because uh, look definitely what a game it turned out to be a great game but I'm saying before the game I'm surprised they didn't show this game uh, on the box but look I, I I managed not to see the score and <laughs> I, I watched the first thing in the morning and I was in for a treat what a game uh, fantastic game just I had everything about it. Finn Harps were brilliant. Then Dundalk turned around and Dundalk were brilliant. And then Finn Harps got a back. And, you know, it, taught, uh, it was just a great game and a great occasion. If, I think Finn Harps would be definitely happier with the point. Because uh, like, it's still Dundalk. I know yeah. they are where they are, but it's still Dundalk. And, you know, a point against Dundalk is always a good result. Finn Harps were the better side. Uh, overall, I just I felt like they had more they had more of a trek on forward. Look, we all know Dundalk the qualities they have with Duffy and Hubin and stuff like that. But Finn Harps looked more like Scoring in the game than Dundalk actually did. And you know, I thought Tundi again, what a performance again! He's he's really turned around for them in the basically since the break. I would say. And, you know, I think Finn Harps would be blessed because Adam Fowley was, before the break, Adam Fowley was probably the best player in the league and in form at the time, banging goals in for them and keeping them where they were in the table. And now he's kind of out on the left or out on the right. And then Tundi is stepping up now. So, you know, I think Finn Harps have really, they have two really good players there. That, and then you have the likes of Mark Coyle, who, for me, is everything, like, everything about uh, Finn Harps everything good about them starts with Mark Coyle for me in the middle he just he, he starts everything off he keeps everything going uh, he's really he's really put himself out there uh, I would say Finn Harps would be happy Dundalk would be filming with that uh, and it just keeps Dundalk down there again yeah, Philip, I mean, it's two teams in form. No surprise it was a draw. I actually called the draw for once and got it right. Um, but for Finn Hart's point of view, yeah, like it keeps them two points above Dundalk as well in the table. Dundalk uh, two points above Waterford. But um, like again, Huben and Duffy, the man for them, I suppose. And it's been like that in a way last few weeks for, for Dundalk, hasn't it? Pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose we wouldn't even be having this discussion as to whether they would be in the playoff or that they would be 100% down there without those two lads. They've just pulled them through in the past few weeks, in my opinion. Um, what a game, though, I have to say. Look back on it and just thought, wow. That was, there was no other word to describe it. It was just wow. It was just everything in it was so entertaining. And um, either side could have won it. But as as Keno said, I, I personally think Finn Harps played better throughout the game though in my opinion you know and they looked like the better and they had a couple of chances that they probably should have taken as well they could have won the game by a goal or two um, look but again I don't know I kind of don't want to agree with Keane in the sense that he said he thinks it's a good point for Finn Harps I think they'll be kicking themselves because the chances they had in the game you know I thought Adam Foley was magnificent in the game the way he went about it and he was he was brilliant and both involved in both goals you know I thought um he was just, he went under the radar a bit, I think, in, in, in social media terms, you know. I don't think there was much chat about him, you know. I think it was all about Tundi and rightly so. And um, 
yeah, no, I think they'll probably be kicking themselves that they didn't get the points in the end. But at the same time, the keynote does make a good point about being a Dundalk side that over the past few years has been very good and a point against them, you'd probably take them, you know. And Yeah, so Fish Trot the United Nils St. Patrick's Athletic won ahead in the game park in Drotta and Alfie Lewis scored with a I think it was practically the last kick of the game, actually. It was deep into injury time. Very good strike as well, to be fair. Um, it's interesting because I was saying for a few weeks that Pats haven't been keeping clean sheets, Keen. And uh, in regards to Rovers, I was saying, keep a clean sheet, you always have a chance to nick a late goal or something like that. And Pats literally went and done that at United Park. Um, I thought Pats just about deserved it, to be fair. Second half, I thought they were the much better team. I think Trotter will be disappointed, though, in terms of... They didn't do enough. They didn't create enough in the game. Like they didn't have enough opportunities to score. I think, and ultimately, if it did finish nil nil, it would have been a very good point on the night. I think for Drotta. But um, I suppose Pats got what they deserved in the end. Keane, I would say, would you? Yeah, and look, it's it's great that you know we got that goal at the end because it was deserved. And you know what? When they when they get that laid on, probably Rovers are the only team that probably believed they're going to score. But you believe the chances are gone. You know, you believe. Look, we had two point blank headers directly down the front of Dave and he, he caught them you know and anywhere else on the goal anywhere else in the goal and it was in but you think your chances are gone first half but what an awful game for the telly in the first half now as well uh, probably even the second half it was an awful game for the telly but you know it was first half I thought Pat's Pat's really marshal dropped it well and I don't think Pats have done that, especially in the last game up there when we were beat 3-1. You know, like James Brown was nowhere to be seen in the game. Conor Kane was nowhere to be seen. Darren Bones had him in his pocket. Uh, they know, you know, I thought Ronan Cockham, again, probably didn't live up to what he, what he was supposed to in the, in the game. Uh, Forrester was quiet. And then, you know, we, we made that change then the second half. We came out with a, a different side, even though they were the same players. We came out with a different mentality in the game. We took the game to draw the uh, Dara Bones. What what a player he is! Like, oh my god, like it's every week I'm saying it, but it just can't get enough of him, and that's the truth. Like every time he's on the ball, he's going past fullbacks. He's going past Conor Kane, who's probably been one of the best fullbacks in the yeah. league this season. Yeah. He's going by him with ace in every. I don't think Conor Kane got the ball once. Uh, I think he just he went by him every single time. He's he's not a player that you'd be looking at if you were looking at stats because he probably loses the ball every time. But he's exciting. He gets the ball. He drives. But he plays them. a risky ball as well. That that won't show in stats, like because exactly. show you've given the ball away and this kind of rubbish. Exciting. You know what I mean? I, I like honestly, Pat's haven't had a right winger since Conor Bourne. And even at that, towards the end of Colin Bourne, I won't call him a right wing. I call him a glorified right wing back. So, uh, but now, you know, now he's he's driving at teams. He's he's making things happen himself. He's linking in with Chris Forrester. You, Chris, I love the way they link up together. The two of them. Chris gets him on the ball every single time. Chris wants to get him on the ball, and you know, Dara does feed in Chris. But you know, he. I think he won us the game. Looking at James, a banquet who is hard to believe he's 17 because he's built like a tank. And, you know, him coming off and then Lee Desmond coming on. And that was just fantastic to see Lee back. Uh, he got some reception from both sets of fans, uh, but definitely the Pats fans. And he really, to be honest, that kind of added to the game that he was back on the pitch and it kind of added to the atmosphere. Every team header as well, though, it's actually a big plus uh, going into the coming weeks have Lee Desmond back as well because, like, Pats are in a cup semi final. You feel like they need their best players at the pitch, and um, yes. they have a better chance to win the cup with him on the pitch, let's be honest, than they do with him off the pitch. And they've missed them badly, let's be honest. Oh, the defending yeah. has been a bit ropey, let's say, the last while. They've missed them really, really badly. And the fact that he came on and didn't. There was no, it was just Lee Desmond. It wasn't like, you know, there was no hesitation in going to head a ball or anything like that, which you'd understand, by the way, a little bit. But uh, it was like he was never away, wasn't it? And, uh, you know, we, well, everyone knows how much I love Phil Lee Desmond. <laughs> Ooh, Desmond! <laughs> <laughs> the smile oh. on his face. Love it. 
I was trying like, to be composed myself. I, I was, it's it's like it really is. It's so good to see him back after it all. Like, oh. that, that was that was horrific. That was yeah. and I was sick to my stomach. And I think everyone in Richmond living that day was. Uh, whether you see him on a pitch again this season, whether you probably see him on the pitch again. Yeah, it was a very nervy happened. moment. You know, it was a really nervy moment. To be fair. But, now he's back. It's like he was never away. He was heading every ball. The cheers every time he headed the ball. And you know, it was great. And then I think, you know, he he obviously had a great part to play in the goal. Uh without like I won't, I won't be nothing as an assist or anything, but he played a great ball forward and went out for a throw in. Uh from that throw in we ended up scoring. Uh Daryl Bunch was laid off Alfie and the look of us. Still got on the top net and it was top bins and it was brilliant, great finish. Uh, like I says, awful game for the telly, not one that uh should have been on the telly to be honest with you. I think I'm not used to Pats being on the telly so much, but you know, it, it, it's great to see that we can get a goal like that in the last minute, especially after last week and stuff like that. It just shows the difference of football, but look. A great win. It just keeps second, I think. We're slowly got dropping points again this week. I think that's second sorted now, and I can't see anyone catching pats. I think second is sorted for them, Phil. But we get on to Drotter, Philip. I mean, uh, it is a little bit squeaky bum time for Drotter, let's be honest, because the teams behind them are pretty much winning, or if not, they're getting points. So uh, I know in a couple of weeks they've got long for the home next without going too far ahead, but that's a very important match for them. They'll be disappointed with the performance. As Keen says, Pat's probably defended better than they have in a long time, but at the same time, you can understand from Drotter's point of view that they weren't creating enough in the match. Yeah, um, I'll be honest with you, Keen. I thought... Oh, Keith, sorry, not Keen. We're both <laughs> I here. Thought that, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I thought this was Pat's, one of Pat's, Pat's stronger performance this season without being outstanding. And I know that sounds silly, but um, draw that, like we see what they've done to them in the first game up there. Like they, they did do them in, like, and I think it was excellent. And uh, obviously, it's very concerning for Drotter, but at the same time, losing one nil to the side that's second in the league at home, like, you know what I mean? You're not going to be. Kicking yourself, like I thought the performance was okay, um, not more than okay. You know, I just thought that the quality of the Pats team showed through, and you know, obviously it's a bit concerning for them that they they are getting that bit closer every week. You know, and mm. as you mentioned with that Longford game coming up, um, you'd expect points there. So, but I I'll be honest with you, I think they've been brilliant this season without without obviously. They obviously have overachieved. Where they are now, you would have they would have bit your arm off this stage coming towards the end of the season had you told them they'd be there after the first week or the first couple of weeks. Um, you know, and I think it's credit to them. Um, obviously, as I said, it, it is a bit concerning. I think they'll be personally okay, Keith. You know, I think they'll just have enough to get over the line in terms of not getting dragged into it. I just think um, the way the players have kind of been in the last few weeks, I think maybe they thought, as you mentioned before, their season was petering out, you know, and that can probably lead to a bit of complacency, which you don't want to say it has, but maybe it's not 100% from every single player and, you know, not trying to question anyone's commitment, but that can happen, you know, it can happen and that probably has. So, as I said, I think they'd be okay. We'll move on to Shamrock Rovers and Derry City and Shamrock Rovers beat Derry City 2-1 at Hal Stadium. You actually tipped Derry to win this as well, by the way. I thought they could win this game, but uh, they actually took the lead early on as well, uh, Philip, and uh, obviously Grace equalised and Mandrew goal right before half time. They, they do have a habit of Rovers, even forget about the last minute winners and that. They do score goals at the right times a lot of the time, don't they as well? Mandrew scored a lot of goals this season. That's nine league goals this season for Danny Mandrew. He just goes into good areas and scores good goals. Like, you know, he's that type of player. He doesn't influence the game getting the ball, like say a Jack Byrne, but he's a different type of player, but he's influentially, influential differently. Um, Like, what can you say for Rovers? Let's we've said it before. The league really is won, like nine points at a Pats game in hand. Uh, Derry, just their march has been I suppose halted slightly for now, Philip. Yeah, to be honest with you, Keith, they weren't great on the night. Um, I th- I personally thought they had a five or ten minute spell both sides of the half where they looked a bit threatening, but no, I for me they weren't good enough. And um, I thought Waterford actually put in a much better display against us there a few weeks back. Um, first five minutes, obviously, as I said, they did have a five minute spell. They looked very dangerous. They got the goal. Um, Silly free kick to give away from Sean Gannon. I thought he just could have sent uh, 
sent a player down the line. I think it was Lafty, yeah. He could have sent Lafty down the line, but he didn't. He decided to take his ankles and Lafty gets on the end of a ball and it's a good goal. But um, Rovers grew into the game. They needed to go. And I said it, like, it was really strange keep being at that game. It actually, it, it just didn't, it felt like a pre-season friendly. Like, cause the, I think it's because the league is wrapped up, you know. It just, no way fans as well is disappointed in that, you know. It just, it takes away from the game and, like, League of Ireland clubs should be ashamed of themselves doing it. I was disgusted at Rovers done it. And uh, same for 3D. I think it's shocking. Like, just there's no need for it. And, you know, like, I'm not even going to mention Pats because Pats only done it because we did it. And that's, so that takes them out of the equation. Like, but that, that's of, the problem as well, Philip, isn't it? It's shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah, so exactly. Like, and then everyone shoots everyone in the foot, if you get me. So, yeah. But, like, yeah. football, what's the point? Like, do you know what I mean? You need to have yeah, a way to there. And it, was, yeah. it was disappointing. And we can talk about it all day, but like uh, this whole pol- uh, politics about League of Ireland football and clubs doing things like that, it's a pain in the arse. And, you know, it was very upsetting to not see them there. I think it took away from the game as well, you know. Um, I think when Derry needed fans there to kind of keep them going, they didn't have anyone, you know. And um, it's better crack anyway, Philip, as well. Yeah, that's and it, like, yeah, that that, alone. That's what it's all about. Yeah. That's what it is all about. And Friday nights, like no one wants to go to a game to watch to watch Shamrock Rovers take on Derry and not see any Derry supporters. That's what it's not about, like you know. And the way days are are a big thing in this country, and when it comes to fans, like the likes of ourselves, we love our away days and disappointing. But again, look, Rovers obviously grew into the game, Keith and. I thought we were really good after the first 10 minutes, you know. Um, that, that was for the first half, actually. Um, we got the two goals towards the end of the half, but the second half was very disappointing. Um, we could have scored a couple of times, but there was a lot of to and fro and there was no intensity to Rovers. I think they thought the game was over at like half-time when they went in. Obviously, it turned out it was, but... Um, they were just trying to walk the ball into the net, not taking shots when they should have. But it was a very strange game overall. Um, Rory Gaffney, though, was absolutely brilliant. And I don't know if you've seen the little flick for the goal around the corner for Mandrew. Can I say it's one thing definitely. there, though? Uh, Rory Gaffney is uh, your version of Lee Desmond Keane, though. So I'll just. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm even <laughs> have a song from now. We even say, have a song. I think there's more now. Just that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He, it's, he's it's getting pretty... that way, is what I'm saying. He's on that road. <laughs> yeah, and you know what I'm like, uh, Keith. At the start of the season, I didn't fancy him at all. You remember, oh. you remember that? I, yeah. I did not. He was not my cup of tea. Oh. The red hair and, takes uh, a while to get used to, you know. Yeah, that's, they're singing it. They have a ginger song from now. I'm just trying to remember it. But anyways, um, yeah, he, he was exceptional. And everything he done was brilliant. And I know we were talking about Georgie Kelly being the Sent the forward of the season and look people probably say still is for me Gaffney has just has literally put himself in that conversation over the past couple of months and um, yeah I think the thing that scares me is if we had Mac and F and we had Jack Bourne and Gaffney was in that squad properly last season you know yeah. it would have been scary it would have been scary to see the results you know and the other thing is it's unfortunate for him but uh, Aaron Green just I don't know what the story is with him like he just seems to be He's been replaced, and Rovers been trying to replace him for years. They haven't been able to do it. it looks like they've finally done that. But um, yeah, now Rovers deserve to win the game on the night, Keith. And I think uh, it's all about just getting to the parade now at this stage. You know, it's it's all wrapped up. Keen, how do you see for Derry? Just um, a blip in the road. Do you think they'll be disappointed with that result? I'd be very disappointed now. I was Derry City mm. that I didn't at least get a point out of that. And I think if Derry turned around, they could have won it there. Rovers. They, they had Rovers, second half Rovers didn't want to know. They were, you know, it was like the league is won. Let's just play these 45 minutes and get it out of the way. And, you know, it, you have that attitude, you could be beaten. So they, they will need to up it again next week and they will need to go out. Look, I'm not going to be too critical on Rovers. They won the game and they done what they had to do to win it without being great. And that's probably all season, mainly, yeah. apart from a couple of games. And, you know, they were they were excellent uh, after Derry scored. And can we talk about Lafferty's uh, celebration? He yeah. broke his neck. <laughs> he nearly broke his neck. I'll t- put a little snippet in here, Keith, over, will you? For people. My God, i seen it. And I literally, i done that watching it because I did think his knees were gone. Yeah, we're laughing we now, are, we but we can it. afford we to laugh now. Yeah, huh? We all laughed at we all laughed at like usually when you score and you see a team celebrating, you're like, oh, 
sake. Like we all started <laughs> cheering. We found it hilarious. Everyone was themselves laughing. I'll tell you one thing, he gave the groundsman some job, I tell you, the lump he took out of the tub as well. Jesus, I thought he was going to China, he was that deep into the tub. You won't be doing that again. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so it was, uh, it was, you know, it was a poor game again, like the Pats game, really, I thought. And the games at the bottom end of the table are a lot more exciting than the games at the top. Uh it's just a formality for Rovers now, I think, to get through the next couple of games. And probably Pats, just to get through the next couple of games. Pats have that little carrot at the end with the, with, with the Cup semi-final. Uh, but Rovers have the carrot the trophy at the end. So, you know, it, both teams are just going to play in the next couple of weeks and seeing what happens, I think. And anyway, I'm not saying there's any complacency between Rovers and Pats. Not at all, because you have that in this league, you'd be beaten. But... You know what? It's just like let's get through this game without any injuries, and you know that that's the way it is. Like we have a little break next week. Uh, Pat have and I think Rovers that Rose game. Play. Still, yeah, yeah, that's still gonna go ahead. So uh, that'll be a good game. That's on the telly as well. Mm. So with them, with there not being a lot of games, you know, and we personally hope Rovers win next week. Uh, but you know, it it was a. It was a poor enough game. But, like I said, they probably don't have to be poor, you know. They they probably don't... They, they don't need me to tell them that, or they... Look where they are in the table. I think it speaks for itself. Yeah, I think Rovers are one of the few... The only team in the league that can kind of win games, I suppose, almost going through the motions in many ways consistently. They can do it because of the quality they have overall. Uh, Finch Longford have won Bohemians four in Longford and this sounds like an absolute hammering but um, again it's the same thing with Longford they took the lead they were actually one up half time through Dean Williams a uh, player you'll know well Philip a Georgie Kelly penalty two minutes into the second half uh, was vital wasn't it for Bowles to get them back into the game and obviously the you know Wilson scored a free kick after 54 minutes typically him Kelly and Mullins were fairly late goals as well and uh, you know it looks like an easy win for Bowles Key and uh, in reality wasn't an easy win though was it no, and I, I didn't see it. I didn't watch the game at all. Uh, anyone that probably turned on the stream the same as me, it was stopping and starting, and I was checking. I was checking live score. I was putting the game on, and I think it was going to be kicking off 25 to 7. And I was like, no, this game kicked off a half. And I was looking at live score, and it was on about 14 minutes, and I was only on 7. So, you know, it, I don't know what happened there. But, I think it kept stopping, it kept starting, so I gave up, I did. And I switched on the Sligo game after the 15 minutes to watch the full game of that. Well, you know, it was going one nil down, it's tough. And I think it was a test of character for Bowers and fairness to them. And, you know, they do well to come out of the game with a win because it's tough away from home against a team playing with no pressure. You're one nil down and all the pressure's on Bowers coming out. Now, look, People will say Keith Long gave him this and that in the dressing room and stuff like that. I, I probably wouldn't say he did. I'd say, look, they they believed in themselves that little bit. They knew that they had the quality on the pitch to go and win it. The perfect start to the second half, get the penalty. Uh, took it away nicely. Then Tyreek, what a fantastic free kick from Tyreek. Uh, really, really good. And I, I'm actually looking forward to seeing... Uh, Tyree coming up against John Ross next next year and uh, John Ross plays right full Tariq plays left full so they'll be coming up against each other uh, for shells and oh, balls the two of them are good players as well yeah really good yeah. players but you know speaking of uh, balls they were they were really good in the game second half from all accounts where I've heard like I said I didn't see it i just seen the goals uh, like Philip said I'm disappointed with the away fans the, the ground was empty last night and you know let, why not let them in and you know Pats have done that for years and they've given Rovers and Bowers basically as much as they wanted really to come to the games and you know I think it makes for a much better occasion because what's half a shed end and Pats empty to anyone and what good is it to anyone it's, it's no good Pats are benefiting from it the game is benefiting from it and you have a great you have a full ground and, you know, it adds to the occasion. So I'm a little bit disappointed they only gave him 200. I've seen all the, all the messing about on, on, online about it all week. You know, 
it, there's a bit of discontent there with fans, isn't it? It's like we're better than you, or yeah, I don't you know, like it. I don't like it personally. It doesn't, it doesn't look right, but I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying, you know, so, there's a there's a big discontent, and then something about the blocks and the Jody and all. I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's, just, <laughs> it's a little bit. It's a little bit strange, isn't it? It's like we're better than you. We're here, you know. And I, I don't know. We're, everyone's a League of Ireland fan. Everyone there is a Bowes fan, and especially your own fans. I, I find it a bit. I've commented on it myself, to be honest. But I find it a bit. Come on, lads, sort it out. Yeah, but I think that I think they will. But you know, they, they got the win. I still think Europe is out of the question now. Um, big old for them tomorrow. Uh, but I don't think it's. Uh, I, I, I still leave the Bows win tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, I just, I don't think they have Europe. I think it's gone now for them. Yeah, Philip, it's just, it's not that they're miles behind. It's just a case of um, all season, it's hard to see them picking up two or three or four wins that they might need to do. It's just difficult to see them do that. It's not the point because you were talking about Pats um, without going into that, winning one nil away to Drotted and I couldn't see Bows do that. Do you get me? Bows would either win that yeah. three nil go out and play brilliant, win 3-0, or end up losing the game. You know, the sort of way. Call Very a spade. Yeah, call a spade a spade. Bowles have been shite this season. Like, there's no question about it. And their standard, with their standard and what they what they expect, they have been absolutely dreadful. And look, you can talk about them winning this game, whatever. Should be in Longford, regardless. Look, Rovers go and do it. It doesn't matter how we do it. We, we've, been in, we've been in the lead for, what is it, I think it was seven minutes or something we've led Longford this season with the results that we've had against them. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's a mad stat. Uh, now, it could be wrong now, but I think that's that's what it was. It's not too much longer if it's any longer. But, like, that's what makes a good team. Being able to go out and dig out results. And Bows don't look like that. Bows, Bows either look like they're up for it or they have mm. no spine and they fall apart. And you cannot expect to get into Europe doing that. You know what I mean? And, like, even the likes of playing Finn Harps there to the week. Like, you know what I mean? That's a game on paper. Bowles should be really, really up for. Because at that time, Europe was not... Like, they were still in contention. Like, I know a couple of weeks have gone by since. And a week has gone by since. And they've had another result. Like, But you kind of think to yourself, you need to win this game. This is a game you have to win. Most win game, biggest mm. game of the season. And it just doesn't seem like they go into games like that. I don't know what it is. About yeah, when they get to the strange. point of you feel like they have to win a game, they usually don't. And that's the issue. Bottle, with Lally. No bottle. No bottle about them. Conversation, Pete. I've said I don't want to be too repetitive. They need to win the cup. And that's as simple as that now. Like, you know, and there's no question about it. I don't think they will win the cup because of all the pressure that's going to be built around it now in terms of the money that it could bring into the club and all this sort of nonsense. So, Look, this up like the result. They got the result in the end. Well, Kino finished Sligo one, Waterford one in the showgrounds, and um, Patterson on the score sheet again for Waterford. Rice scoring a goal for Sligo. Um, who is happier here, in your opinion? Yeah, Waterford for me. Yeah. No question about it. They uh, they could have won it at the end. Mm-hmm. A great service at the end. Oh, I have to say now. I, Another good game, a tough game. And I think it shows you the quality in the league. That's like what's hard and Waterford are fighting for their lives to stay in the division. And 27 points for Waterford in their last 15 games. That's a big turnaround for them, isn't it? Massive. And that, look, that's, that's, they've given themselves a fighting chance. And I think if they finish ninth before the season, if they finish ninth, I'm sure they'd, uh, that's exactly where they'd want to be. You know, when... Mark came in and took over. They were down there with, with Longford and they were gone. So, you know, it's. I think they would have took, took ninth position straight away. The minute Mark came in, I'd say that was the aim. They kind of flattered themselves a little bit and got themselves up a, up a good bit. But, and then they kind of went through two or three weeks where they got themselves back down there a little bit. But, you know, they're picking points up. They're not losing games. You're not playing well, you don't lose in this league. And that's that's the question. I think Rovers have done that. I think Pats have done that on a few occasions as well. You know, if you're not playing well, don't let the others get three points on you, you know? And I think that's exactly what Waterford done. Sligo weren't great in the game at all. Uh, Waterford probably could have edged it. Like I said, great clearance at the end. No question about it. He could have easily thrown that into his own net. And now Waterford are going back, up, back down the road with three points. But... One all, probably 
a fair fair reflection on the game. Uh, I don't know why the ref actually didn't add on. Like he added on three minutes, and I think it was three thirty, or there was ninety seconds and to- ninety minutes and thirty seconds on the clock when he added that on, and he think he blew her at two forty or something, mm. which was. Which was very strange, and I think Greg Bulger having the goal them as usual <laughs> at, at the end. But you know, that's probably why he, that's probably why he blew up early. <laughs> yeah, I think he was he was calling them a saying next Tuesday. Oh yeah, time. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, I do. It's it, it's brilliant for the it's it, it's brilliant for the league that Waterford, Dundalk, and Harps all got points, and basically, like last week, it says the exact same in the table. <laughs> Philip, yeah, Sligo are just hanging in to third place, really, aren't they? The four above Derry now, they're just hanging on, but they're not playing like a team that uh, are in the European race as such. Yeah, um, it's it's mental, though, because like no one else is winning below them. Like it keeps keeps happening that like every time anyone has a chance to reel them in and get within a couple of points or so, no one does seems to do it. It's weird. Like the, I think they'd be counting their. Uh, Counting their great saving graces at the end of the season, that they will get it. I think they will probably just hang on just mm-hmm. because of the form of other teams around them, you know. And um, yeah, I think you need to just look and they'll be delighted with their early season form because that's what's put them in it. Let's be honest. Um, they've not been the slug of old. Uh, I think I was pretty sure I said they'd finish in Europe. Um, it's kind of petered out the way I thought it would for them. Um, but in a sense, when I seen them starting so strong, I was a bit concerned. I thought they were in the title race, the way things were going, especially after they beat us up in Tala. But um, now overall, uh, I thought it was a good game to watch. Um, I didn't know the score of it, and to be honest with you, I thought I thought Waterford probably could have nicked, obviously, just the you know, chance at the end and all. But I thought they'd done well in the game, you know. And as I said, I've seen them in, uh, in Tala there a few weeks back. Very impressed with them, you know. Um, even if they're not winning games... They're com- very, very competitive and they could have easily got a point against us there uh, a couple of weeks back. And um, look, I suppose, not a bad... You put it into context, a, re- a point against a team that's toward in the league considering where they are and where they've come from, it's not a bad result. And I think I said they have that game in hand on Dundalk, don't they? Um, when it comes no, to the playoffs. No, they're actually well, level now. They're level in games. So level. Oh, that was the game. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so... Obviously, then they'll, they'll need a result or two to go their way if they're to to um to leapfrog them. But yeah, I just think we the way games are coming up at the moment, Keith. You know, uh, we obviously have to play uh, Dundalk, and that's obviously a big game for us. But I think it's a massive game. Well, it's a big game for Dundalk, but it's an even bigger game for Waterford. I think because I do think we'll beat them up there in Ireland now next week, and uh, that'll obviously give them the chance to get closer to them. And uh, I just think that the way the fixtures are going. And the way both sides are going at the moment, I just see Waterford nicking it towards the end of the season, towards the last couple of games. So, um, yeah, big, big uh, couple of weeks ahead for both sides, Waterford and Dundalk, that is. Yeah, it's it's an interesting race, but it's funny because for me, I think whoever finishes ninth will probably stay up, particularly over two legs. You can be caught out in one, but over two legs, I'd expect any of those teams to stay up. But it's going to be an interesting race anyway because you don't want to finish ninth. Look, guys, we'll leave it there. Thanks for watching. Uh, Subscribe if you're new. Hit your bell notification button so you don't miss an upload. And let us know what you think in the comments. Cheers. Thank you.